Nigel, uh, you've written this book, The uh, Winning, yeah. and it has uh, received an award as well from chess.com book of yeah. the year. Uh, but you took a very interesting route in this yeah. book. Yeah. You didn't select your best games, but you selected eight tournaments that you have won and annotated each and every game of that event. Yeah. Why did you choose that? Yeah, well, um, I did it uh, for the following reason that actually I enjoy best games collections, um, but you very often don't have context to them. You see a nice game here, a nice game there. Now, if you, if you will look in my career, uh, I, I've played thousands of games and I actually have hundreds of publishable good games right. uh, out of those thousands but you um, yeah you don't get the context so uh, I wanted to really uh, show what is required but how do you go about winning a, a tournament because um, it's distorted if you just put in your your best games you, think, you know here here is a genius blah 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 but in fact when you sit down in the the tournament and you play your games uh, you'll play well on one day and then the next day you'll be completely out of form how do you cope with those difficulties struggles how do you do it when you're not uh, you, you know, you're not finding the center of the bat, basically. <laughs> That's, um, you know, how do you score? So uh, that's really the way through. And there are different situations. So I chose them over a period of time, uh, over quite a, p a period of, um, of years. And there are different... Um, situation so like for example uh, you know I showed this um, nice one at my lucky number one that's it uh, this is a very interesting game against Victor Korchnoi hmm. um, where I played h4 it was it was a bit unusual actually in the, at that time now it's you know, no, everyone it's, plays H4. <laughs> it's pretty normal, you know. I mean, they do, they play other things as well, Queen G4, you know, but uh, H4 uh, is not something uh, offbeat like it was at the time. So I'm describing uh, my path through uh, these, these tournaments. So my, in the second one, for example, um, I played in Reykjavik and it, I got off to a blistering start. Uh, I scored six out of six against some of the best players in the world, some of the leading Icelandic players, but also, uh, you know, I, I was beating um, Korchnoi and Timon and really top players at the same time. And uh, I describe a, a, a self inflicted injury in a, in a way that in round seven I offered an early draw to Lajos Portish because I thought well the five rounds left I'm winning the tournament and it was accepted and it was the beginning of my decline in that event because I totally lost my rhythm mm. And I had to keep going. And it actually even doesn't matter if I lose the game. Just, or we, we play the game and let's say we would have a draw after 40 moves or something. Um, that would be okay. Um, but I've got to keep in the rhythm. But the moment I started going for like short draws, it was the end. And then I couldn't play... Uh, at all. And this is one of the pitfalls mm. that um, I describe. And I describe various other uh, situations uh, in, in tournaments. So 
I wanted it to be real, something that people can relate to, because right. we all have, um, you know, these these good days and bad days, and how do you pull yourself together? Sometimes you have very narrow escapes. Um, so it's it's there. So it's an unusual format uh, for a book, and I think it's an attractive. Uh, format, even though I say so myself. Have I'm, you ever seen such a format? I, I do you know what? I'm trying to think. It wasn't maybe uh, uh, Tarash, didn't, isn't uh, this Dry Hundred Chuck Party and by Tarash? That's basically a similar uh, thing. So, uh, but it's pretty unusual. Right. Yeah, and I mean, is there a your favorite event out of these eight that you have chosen? Um, I think probably some of the er earlier ones. Nineteen eighty-seven, I was playing very well, and uh, uh, you you know, so that that was that was good. It it, it finishes off um, with. A tournament in Iran, and uh, you know, they were not particularly highly rated players, but these were mm. young, yeah, yeah. you know, young I saw players. Matsud Lu and yeah, 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 and and Ali, Re Ali Reza Firuzja, and there was also Sarah Khadem, and right. I played really well in that event. I knew when I played that event that that was a really good result. Mm. And that maybe other people didn't understand it was a really good result, but when they look at it now, they think, "Oh yeah, these yes. are these are known <laughs> players." You know, at the time it was just a, a load of nobodies right. as far as they were concerned. So um, uh, yeah, I, I need to do uh, something else. I'm hoping that. Um, uh, I'll get some sales in in India uh, sure. for this because uh, it's a big market yes. and uh, and people are chess lovers in the the country. I was very very pleased it won the 2021 uh, Chess.com Book of the Year award. So I was really proud. Of course, I didn't win the English Chess Federation Book of the Year <laughs> award for that year, which they gave to something else. Although I, I, uh, I got an honourable mention, you know, uh, and they're so miserable in the ECF that they, you know, they can't award it to, um, you know, a major book from from an Englishman. <laughs> Too jealous, I think. <laughs> but when it comes to this book, and if let's say uh, an improving player wants yeah. to get it, w is there a level that you think that someone should be at to read this? Or? No, I. I th this is something I, I I find this a very very peculiar concept. You know, this book it's for players of. A certain level. Let me ask you a question. Let's take a classic. Bobby Fischer's 60 memorable games, which I'm sure you've read. Yes. Who is that aimed for? <laughs> for? For everyone, I guess. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, even GMs can enjoy it. And yeah. also someone who's just maybe got rating yeah. can learn from yeah. his games. So, I have that book at home. My grandmother... Stella, uh, she bought me that book for Christmas, and I, I think I was nine years old at the time that I got that book. So, you know, I, I was not an experienced player. I really enjoyed the book. Then, if I pick the book up today, I still enjoy it. Mm. My understanding of chess as a nine-year-old and as a 58 year old are totally different right but as far as I'm concerned the book is for the two me's you know as a as a, as a child and you know a, a very experienced player so 
Yeah, I don't think you uh, anybody is is ruled out uh, on this. You know, people will pick up certain things. Maybe if they're very weak players, they may miss some elements, but they will pick up on other things. Right. And, and that would be exactly my experience on looking at Fisher's 60 memorable games. That uh, did I appreciate all the nuances as a nine year old? You bet I didn't. Mm. But I learned things. Right. And then you, you, you learn again when you come back to it at, at, at a later point. Brilliant. And lastly, I want to ask will you write a next book on this? Or is yeah, it... well, it's. Um, you know, it's it's partly a question of uh, sales. I'll be uh, honest with you. Um, I was supposed to uh, uh, do um, another couple of books. In fact, I had a contract for a second book, but I was very late in starting it. The quality chess have cancelled uh, the thing, so it will probably require another publisher. But I would like to do basically this series, and um, as I mentioned, it's it's mentioned there at the the beginning that this book uh, is essentially uh, it is a book on um, uh, round robin tournaments, so all players. The next one. Uh, may even be more interesting mm. because it will be on matches and these are like some of the major things in my career so starting off with a match I played against uh, the US champion Lev Albert when I was the British champion so uh, you know so I was a 19 year old playing against Lev Albert and um, I, I crushed him actually 7-1 wow. in, the, in, the, in the match so that's actually chapter 1 chapter 1 has been written uh, but since I got the, this job in, in, in FIDE it takes up a lot of my time so um, I think I just need to work on it a little bit in my spare time uh, and uh, you know annotate one game at a time and advance it uh, so it will include you know really important things um, like my match against Karpov and you know and, oh. and so on and against Timon etc etc those key world championship things and I think that that will be uh, very educational. Quite sure. One of the nice things was I, I you know, I had some comments uh, re recently um, from this. From um, there was one uh, person wrote to me, and uh, it was actually a Russian girl. She said she got the, it, it, it's appeared in Russian now, and she said it's the best chess book she'd ever read. And um, I'd like to stick that on, <laughs> on the blurb, you know, that, that, <laughs> to quote that. And um, it's nice when you get uh, positive uh, feedback and there's plenty gone into it. So I, I had this concept of, of three different books. So Round Robins, Matches, and the last one, would be open, open tournaments. Yeah. But you have won plenty. And I've won plenty <laughs> of those. And I would definitely have a Commonwealth Championship <laughs> or two. Or Gibraltar is going to be right. in there and, and, and so on and, and so forth. And, and um, uh, I, I'm looking for uh, different titles. I've, I've been actually struggling to find a really good title for the match book mm -hmm. because I think the word I want is something like prevailing mm -hmm. and because that really describes what it is those matches are very often right. you know I mean okay I crushed Albert most of those matches were very hard 
four. They're very close, and you just you you so you prevail, and sometimes from a really difficult uh, situation, and then you know for the open tournament, um, you know it could be spanking or something. Like that. I like that title, <laughs> you know. I, I think um, I'm a little bit afraid to use that title because uh, I'm sure that people will buy the book unseen, and I'll get very disappointed reviews from people who uh, discover it's not quite what they <laughs> had hoped to see in it. You know, <laughs> that it's only chess games. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nigel, we'll look forward to all the <laughs> subsequent volumes. <laughs> yeah. Prevailing and spanking. <laughs> Thank okay. you.